Okay, so I'm busy building a frame to hold this drum in very steadily. And again, this is sort of specific to, uh, to my gasifier, so maybe not as useful for everybody else. But basically, there's just one bolt for the moment to hold each strut up, whether it's you know here on the vertical or on the horizontal. But once I'm done with the main frame, I'll probably put in some more bolts just to make it more stable. But that's how it's held on at the bottom. And then at the top, I've drilled some holes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, you know, more pieces of this to sort of go all the way around and form a frame at the top, which will mean, you know, cutting probably areas like that, like open in a, as a trapezium sort of shape, so that this metal can bend around and then the flat bit, I'll drill a hole in there and um, it'll go in, in here forming a belt all around the, the drum uh, once that's all done that should be quite stable and then i can uh, put that other bit there reverse it put it on top after i put the chains in and the little hood over here with the holes to hold the uh, the ash so uh, i'll uh, give you a little update once i'm done with the frame and uh, show you how it all fits together So the frame for the drum has now been finished and it's basically um, this sort of belt that goes around it and goes all the way around. It's made from one piece of metal that I've just cut little um, slots in where it needed to bend and it goes all the way around and it's bolted in on every strut it's been held in by a, a bolt top and bottom so it's a pretty strong structure it's not going to go anywhere and um, so the next bit now that I'm going to do is um, connect uh, the chains here so <coughs> this bit of chain here and uh, what it's going to look like when it's finished is the chain is going to be attached to the drum with these little eye hole things. Um, the chain is going to, this is obviously upside down, the chain is going to come up to about here. And then there's going to be some kind of a bowl here with holes in it to prevent the, um, the ash from falling through. How exactly that's going to look like, I'm not sure yet. Um, and I'll, I'll just go along, we'll, we'll learn as I go. This is the thing that I'm thinking to use. So it's gonna go through, it's gonna be held in here by washers and bolts. And um, the chain's gonna probably attach to this side of it uh, going down. Now, when, uh, I think it's important to mention something, even when building uh, the, when building this thing, as you drill and cut and do other things, even the big bolts at the bottom, the ones that are holding the uh, the wheels together over there they will spin off because the vibrations and so on will make them come off so what most people use is basically something like this these are the bolts relating to this and they're self um, tighten or self holding bolts I don't know what you call them it's got like a little rubber thing inside that means it doesn't vibrate off the problem with that is, of course, that inside a gasificator, this can get quite hot. The plastic could melt, potentially cause some kind of a safety hazard. So what I'm doing instead is um, using metal crimping um, washers that prevent the, the bolts from spinning. So once I, once I do this, I'll show you what I'm using there. Uh, and I think it's a safer alternative. Um, especially given that the inside of this will be on the inside of the gasifier so if you're doing stuff on the outside you know that's fine I've got some uh, some of these bolts here are like held in place with the, with something like this but that's because they're on the outside that that even if the drum gets hot the conductivity to this and then to the bolt is it's not going to be enough to melt the plastic or anything like that it might get a bit warm but um, I've uh, 
played around with enough hot metal now to to have an idea of it so anyway let me get to it and i'll uh, i'll show you how i'm doing it over there i still haven't figured out what kind of a bowl exactly i'm going to use at the bottom but uh, we'll figure that out together all right here we go um i'm gonna be only going to make three holes and but what i should do first is measure how far each hole is from the edge so let me let me do that in some respect by using this i'm going to use that as my measuring tool Okay, as I told you, I'd be showing you all my mistakes. There are several here. First of all, <coughs> I should have done these holes before I put the pipe in. Um, second, this is a slightly blunt metal bit because I've used it for other things. And I was just trying to go through it in one go. Uh, but it's always better, you know, for the reason that it's about the same size. But it's always better to start with a smaller hole when you're dealing with metal. Um, and then doing the uh, the full hole later. Uh, I'm I'm sort of eyeballing it here to try and get it like to have three three holes that are the same sort of uh, distance around the perimeter. And I might get it slightly wrong, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. So. Um, that's why I'm not too concerned about that, although it generally has to be in the right sort of ballpark, which I think it is. <laughs> and. Uh, I'm just marking it for the moment. And I'm going to switch to a smaller drill bit, make the hole, and then go back to this one to make it the right size. You know, there's a lot of this sort of thing that's happening mostly off camera. that you don't see uh, in terms of like just generic little screw ups that can save you time if you if you got them right first time. So here's the smaller bit. And uh, let's just I'll show you how what a difference it makes if you uh, start off right and how quickly this will go through. See what I mean? So, uh, you know, there's a uh, there's an old Italian saying that translated to English is approximately go slowly because I'm in a hurry, which means. Whenever you're trying to like save time and do things quickly, very often you screw it up and have to do it properly again, which takes longer than the original task would have.
and as I said this is almost the right size but it's a little bit so uh, it's a little bit of adjusting which is good You want these to be pretty um, tight holes, like at the right sort of size. You don't want them to have an excess size because then it'll leak gas and so on. You don't really want that. So I'm going to have this kind of washer on both both sides, just because it strengthens the uh, the location on which this is attached to. Um, it makes it spreads it over a wider area. Uh, and less likely to damage the, the hole or whatever, even as uh, the chain gets jiggled about and whatever. So that's that. I'll, um, for the next bit, I'm gonna have to put this on the side, so I'll show you that a little bit later. So as I mentioned, I was gonna show you how I'm gonna hold these bolts in place. So this is gonna be, again, keep in mind that the tube is upside down at the moment. When it's in its proper position, this will be the other way around so this um, you'll notice I've put like a nut there just to like give it a little bit of distance from the drum and there's gonna be one of these washers this is gonna be on the inside of the drum so that's um, that's what it would look like with the chain coming off here uh, on the inside you know, on, on the on the other side of this, what's gonna be there is another washer. So that's what it's gonna look like, and where my finger is, that's where the drum's gonna be. And then I'm gonna have two of these things. So I'm gonna have a nut to hold it in place, and then I'm gonna have one of these little um, crimping washers here which I hope you can tell, that prevents the next bolt, or the, rather the next nut from, um, you know, coming off with vibration and whatever, because it crimps it there. So I'm going to have two bolts on the, on the outside squishing this down, and possibly um, another one of these also between the washer and the nut. I'll see how that goes, and I'll do a few tests, but that's basically what it's going to look like. Okay. All right, so um, just showing some fairly obvious things, but you know, it's always good to show everything. Um, I ran out of the of the proper washers, so I just made a couple of myself. I had these bits lying around, saves me a trip to the hardware store. It's just easier to drill a couple of holes in there. And uh, basically what I'm doing here is joining the chain to the bottom of that long enough link that it'll go to the top so all I'm doing is you know using a bit of um, cable wire this is about I think it's one millimeter uh, I've lost the ticket that it's on but um, anyway this this is it I think it's about one mil maybe 1.5 something like that anyway it's nothing special it's just normal metal wire and then uh, give it a bit of a twist so that it's got some play but at the same time it's fairly fairly strongly twisted in there so it's not going anywhere and uh, that's basically it and then just trim off, trim off the ends with a uh, small wire cutter. There you go. So that's gonna hold this, like this.
and uh, I'll do the other ones exactly the same and I'll show you in a little bit what I've what I've done <clears throat> all right so I've got my three uh, little chain bits here and uh, now it's a matter of putting them on the drum which uh, you know when I said hurry up to hurry up you gotta go slow and I'm really terrible at that because uh, I'm a very impatient man so I'm probably gonna end up screwing up my nice red jumper which my wife got me and uh, in order to try and avoid that what I should do is go back to the house change into something uh, pretty much in all the rest of my clothes which are you know kind of hobo chic but instead um, what I'm gonna do is just put on this jacket here and hope for the best <laughs> and it's literally because I want to save just a couple of minutes of not going back to the house and looking for a top and whatever um, it's not wise don't do what I do you know I told you I'd show you guys all my mistakes and that is probably one of the better ones or one of the most common ones I make so um, there you go that goes there and I think I might have lost one of the little See, that's the other thing, because I'm kind of rushing. I want to get done before lunch. Possibly lost a little washer, but that's okay. I've got spares. But again. This is all easier if you plan properly. I'm more of a just get on with it and wild acid kind of guy, which I am trying to improve in the new year, but it's a slow process. Anyway, now two of these and Okay, now I don't think you can really see what I'm going to be doing inside here, but it's pretty self explanatory, really. It's just one big washer, so it's a washer on the inside, one of these little guys then a ball, then a nut, and then another one of these, and then another nut. Basically, that's it. So, bit is tightening these things which I can't really do on my own because I need somebody to hold the outside stuck so I'll probably get one of my kids to help me with that and uh, I'll show you the finished product in a bit right so with respect to the bowl a um, couple of things Basically what I think the bowl is supposed to do is to keep the uh, the wood also from like just falling straight through the hole 
Um, so what I'm gonna what, what I've done here, a bit of punched mixture of punch through and drill through holes, as you can see, most of it concentrated around the area where the pipe comes in. But what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna put a, like a chicken wire net on top. So that's hopefully gonna stop the, um, the big pieces from falling in. And so what goes through is only gonna be chicken wire sized stuff. And then that can fall through these holes. Now from experience with my stove in the house, I've learned that no matter what you do, it's gonna be soot and stuff that's gonna eventually block this up at some point, then you'll have to open it up and whatever. But um, until that happens, what I'm going to try and do is smooth out all these little um, you know, bits of metal because that just makes it really easy for the soot to grip onto something. So I'm going to try and smoothen this out a little bit. Uh, I'll see if that has any success or not. Some bits can just be like you know, flattened out by turning the little metal tongues back out. And I think that's a, a better solution in some cases, not always. You can see I'm working with top quality equipment here. But uh, you know, remember on that other channel, the Apocalypse Joe, or Joe Apocalypse, I forget what I call it. Our, uh, our motto here is, of course, that we have uh, Apocalypse Quality Engineering with Zombie Horde Precision. Uh, I'm not just whistling Dixie when I say that. You, know, you can tell that uh, I have a true commitment to that sort of level of quality here. But uh, the main thing is to make it work and to i don't care if it doesn't look pretty i'm not at that stage of the farming cycle where i care about that right now um i just care that it works that's point number one you know maybe in a couple of years once i've got like things the way i want them everywhere then i'll start worrying about that I had a <laughs> had a conversation with my wife about that this morning so um, I've been wanting to put this like piece of wood over the stove that uh, will, uh, you know, that you can hang frying pans and stuff off off of the, of the wooden stove. And she's like, uh, yeah, um, could you like sort of pick up a nice piece of wood? And I was like, well, yeah, you know, it's inside the house. You know that. That room, you know, this room, that the sort of kitchen area slash dining lunch room, it's kind of the only room we used to sort of entertain people, you know. And the whole house already looks like higgly piggly, is what she said. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about, woman? I mean, look at all the paintwork that I've done here. And she's like, yeah, you know, I used to have this dream of like when I have my own house, it'll be like perfect and it'll be all like. I was like, look, <laughs> you know, it's a. It's a farming home that the, the foundations of which are like from 1700. So, you know, it's old. It's, just, it's a different look. So like, yeah, yeah. And she sort of, I've just given up on that now that she said, you know, but and she, she, she meant it, you know, it was like the, the disappointed woman that's like, oh, well, you know, I thought I'd live in a nice house, but now <laughs> I'm like, piss off, you know. That's, this is not the finished state. We've just got like more important things to do right now. You know, over time, we, we get it, you know, nice. And uh, she just, you know, that look that she's given me other times and then she's always been proven wrong. Where she thinks I'm just talking crap and then a year or two down the line, she's like, oh, actually, yeah, no, you were right. And this is a bit of that, but, uh, you know, I get it, I'm not a patient guy, but I do have a, a certain ability to be patient when it's, um, when it's required, and you know, hunting, building, doing this stuff, I mean, 
the gasifier is late. Um, I'm not going to try and bullshit my way out of that. I, I had reasons. But again, like I told my wife about something else unrelated this morning, it was like, look, if you always have an excuse for something that you're doing wrong, like, you know, she's, she's always late. She, she takes the ages to, like, get ready, get out the house, whatever. And she's like, well, you know, I had to do this for the kid, and I had to do that, and I wanted to put a, a nice dress on, whatever. And it's like, yeah, you see, if you were always in time, and then you have an excuse one day where it's like, oh, whatever, my kid threw up, or I had to change again, or something, that's fine. But given that you're late every time, that's, you can't, your excuses are, are bullshit. You're bullshitting yourself as well as the other people, because... If it really was, you know, you, you can't have an excuse every day for the same thing that you keep doing not properly, you know, for, for years. That's not an excuse. Those are not excuses. They're not valid excuses. They're just your justification to yourself of why you can't do something that a bunch of other people manage to do all the time. So you got to fix you, you know, it's not, it's not the thing, but the excuse is just a lie. And, uh, you know, generally speaking, I'm, I have to admit, since I've had kids, it's, it's a little bit more difficult than it was to be on time. But even, that, even now, you know, even with the kids, even if I'm, sometimes I'm on my own with them or whatever, I'm generally a punctual person. So, this is the same thing. I, uh, I am late with the gasifier, but... I did have some reasons, I got really sick and whatever. But anyway, it's a nice sunny day, so let me see if I can carry on with this. Okay, so it's definitely a bit smoother. Uh, don't know if it'll make a huge difference, but I hope it does. And uh, next thing is to put this onto the uh, fire bit. So I'll be back in a bit when I've done that. So uh, now we reached the point where I'm going to try and hook this up under here in a pretty temporary fashion at first. So I don't know that I've got it right yet. I'm gonna have to lift it and have a quick check. Put it on top of the other one, that's going to be the fun part. And so, this is now what the gasifier is going to look like. Obviously, this is just resting on top now, so it's got a little gap there, and of course, the drums are exactly the same size, so. And I'm going to figure out how to seal this joint. Um, I have a couple of ideas. One of them is you could put little metal strips that um, that go from both sides and then rivet it in. But I think initially I might just leave it like this and maybe just put a little bit of mastic for testing um, 
how the gasifier works because there's going to be all sorts of other pipes and things that need to go in and out of here. So this is going to come off several times while we put in the other uh, gas pipes that need to come out and so on. And um, even after I've done that, once I've got the other outlets and so on, I'll still probably want to just rest it with the weight on to test it. And it obviously has to be good weather for a couple of days in a row in order to do that. But the next step now is putting in the other gas pipes on the blue one and the, um, the filter and so on. So those are the next steps that I really need to look at getting done right first. And then uh, how to connect this is probably going to be one of the very last things we do. Um, I can think of, a s of several things. And if you're not going to run around with it a lot, probably just a bit of like sealant is enough if it's going to be in place. Now I have this on wheels because I don't know where in the property I might want to use it. So, um, but in such a case, if you were going to move it across terrain and stuff, then this would probably come off and you'd have to apply another bit of mass. Anyway, that's uh, where we are now. So there's been a bit of progress, hopefully, and uh, uh, the next bit will be putting the gas pipes in the blue bit. And uh, hopefully that's not going to be a complete nightmare, but uh, you never know. Alright, so now we've done another two struts there. This is going to be the, uh, the can that I'm going to use for the filtering. And there's basically, I wonder, I don't think there's enough light, but I want to try and show you what's in there. There's the pipe with the uh, hanging upside down sort of pasta drainer. Um, and I don't know if I put that exactly at the right sort of distance or whatever, but that's trial and error stuff. So there's going to be a pipe coming off somewhere, somewhere probably either there or there, that goes into this. This is going to have a divider inside and another pipe coming out the other side with a, um, a vent that sucks air through. And there's also a couple of other holes that you need to make in the blue drum in order to have the um, in order to have the, the place where you clean the ash out of and um, also the place where you start the fire and the place where you need to shake the little pasta drainer thing that's inside there anyway I hope that gives you a sense of what the cart is for and why I built it uh, essentially the cart is now done there there is enough space on the end there to put some more struts across and eventually put the generator on there as well which is something i will do when we get towards the end but that's it for now